Okay, so hi everyone. This is the second uh, session or a second kernel over coffee session. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, spin locks. We're going to continue talking about spin locks. So we'll cover the cute spin locks implementation, con this continuation of from from where we stopped, which was ticket locks. So, uh, Vinny, do you want to say anything? Um, no, I think. I'm good. It's yeah, very excited to hear this session. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So, where we started last time was uh, with, uh, we looked when we looked into ticket locks. We discussed the the problems that ticket locks solved, which is that uh, you can have some unfairness if you just did a test and set right of of spin lock. And uh, so ticket has this queuing mechanism. So basically you have like a uh, current count the counter and and uh, and a, and a ticket counter, right? Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants the uh, the lock, they go and they grab grab a ticket. and then people who already have the lock, they unlock they increment the current, you know, when they unlock. So it's kind of the, we gave that DMV example where, you know, if it's your turn, then your ticket will match the current counter. So when you unlock, you increment the current. And then whenever these two are equal, uh, you know, you can enter the critical section. So you spin until they're equal. So that gives some fairness, like it's a queuing mechanism. It gives fairness. It's a queue, right? Basically. Yeah. Uh, the problem, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. And no, no, I was I was trying to envision the queue. So yeah, the ticket ticket basically serves as the position in the queue, right? Yeah, exactly. The position in the queue. Yeah. Um and then we discussed that it doesn't fully solve fairness, but there's no real way to fully solve fairness in the sense that if you have the cash line for the ticket being grabbed by CPUs that are far away. Uh, then you can have the CPUs that are closer to the cache line get their tickets first, which is equivalent to saying that people who are in a who are trying to get a ticket uh, to get into the queue, they are all like trying to get in line, and you know they they you know some might push the others if they're stronger or something. So there's that's just a, the the reality of life. Maybe there is a way to fix that in hardware, but I don't know. I feel like that synchronizing that would be very expensive yeah so but there is a, there's still more room for improvement in tickets so we we discussed why tickets is also not you know not the best way to do queuing because this uh, the ticket uh, so when you have a bunch of people spinning right so say one guy is spinning contending on the lock another guy is spinning they'll both be doing uh, current equal to ticket Right, mm -hmm. because they're trying to uh, they're trying to match their ticket to the, to whatever the counter is. So this thing is in the same, basically, it's the same cash line. So uh, th there's cash contention because they're all spinning and trying to. Um, uh, in theory, like if uh, if they're all spinning on the same cash line, most likely the cash line is in the read read stage right uh -huh. yeah. you have the modified share. Of share. Uh -huh. yeah, share state. so it's probably not that big a deal but if you have anybody who comes in and tries to grab the uh, tries to grab the ticket or the current uh, or change the current number then uh, then you'll have invalidations and you know again it will cost some it'll cost some kind of bouncing so that initial cash miss invalidation will happen. So if you have a lot of locks, unlocks, and, and things like that simultaneously happening, then all the contenders will get, all the spinners will get invalidated. That's not ideal. So that brings us to cute, uh, cute uh, spin locks. Like, can we do better than that? Can we? Uh, so next, uh, we can go to the next uh, Jamboard. So can we do better in a way, in the sense that can we, is there a way we can spin 
in a way that we don't share our we don't share our accesses with other spinners. Okay. You see? Because in theory, if you think about it, like spinning is really uh, independent. Like you know, when one guy spins, why do we have to depend on another spinner? Right? They're they're both contenders. We only have to depend on the person holding the lock because they have to give us the lock next. Okay. We don't so, really need uh, to worry about other people spinning. So you need to share the. Uh, memory location only with the guy who holds the lock rather than everyone is that the idea yeah yeah or at least that guy needs to know your memory location so they can signal you oh okay okay that's Got the it. intuition of cute spin locks so so let's start let's try to build it okay slowly mm -hmm. so um so let's say we have a lock uh, double pointer, okay. Uh, this is some double pointer. Uh, what do I name it? Do I name it lock or let me call it MCS actually? MCS, okay. Lock. So let's call this struct struct MCS. MCS lock, okay. This is a double pointer, and initially this double pointer is null, okay. Um, it's, what, what's the full form of MCS? I uh, yeah, uh, uh, banking on the name, but it's there's three people who invented the the algorithm. There's a paper on it and stuff. So okay, yeah, I thought it might be some some algorithm. Like I didn't know it was a person's name. Okay. Yeah, I can look it up. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know if it's worth uh, digging into the history of it, but yeah, yeah. actually, it's two people, Melor, Krami, and Scott. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I thought it will be something like uh, like AVL, uh, sorry, not AVL, the uh, red black tree, so RB tree has, I didn't know it was name, okay, oh, okay, okay. yeah, 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 it's uh, they're, they're names of people. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. So this is our lock. Okay. So this is a, this is kind of everybody. Everybody has access to to this. All the whether you're you know when you want to grab the lock or you want to unlock it or whatever, you need to know this. So this is like a global you know variable. Okay. okay. Everybody's allowed to to access it. And then uh, what is the struct MCS lock, right? So struct MCS lock has uh two fields okay mm -hmm. so it has a locked bit and it has the the next uh pointer so the next is basically who is who's who's the next one to get the lock we'll get into that okay mm -hmm. but i'm just okay. trying to build the algorithm first okay so everyone who so first of all as i mentioned this is global right mm -hmm. but this is uh, uh instances every spinner has their own instance of this and they have their own independent instance okay okay so in the kernel we implemented as per cpu uh objects okay but for just to build an intuition of uh, cute spin locks um you, it's important to understand that every every spinner contender lock holder or whatever they have their own struct mcs lock instance okay, okay? and uh so the way it works is okay so let's let's just do a, a walk through a scenario of locking and unlocking okay so Say uh, the first say the first, say somebody who wants to grab the lock. Let's call it. Uh, uh, let's call it uh, MCS lock uh, first. Okay. So the first guy who wants the lock, uh, they uh, do a exchange on the on the lock double pointer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, they basically want to uh, want to 
gra grab it, right? Is it exchange or compare exchange? I think it's compare exchange, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the, I'm just building an intuition, okay? So the first time somebody grabs the lock, this guy, lock is now pointing to the, the first guy, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first guy, he knows he got the lock because, because it's null, right? Yeah. Because it's null, they, uh, they know that they got the lock, okay? So they enter the, the critical section, everything is, everything is good. Uh, and then the next thing is now the next guy, the next guy who comes, okay? So again, you have uh, you have a struct MCS lock second, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the next guy who comes, he tries to check again atomically if lock is null or not, and if it is, so it has to be a compare exchange, I guess. Okay. If yeah. it's null, then it will switch. Uh, so obviously, it notices that uh, it is not null. Um, so, so, okay. So the operation is actually an exchange. It's not a compare exchange. So when oh. second, when second exchanges, uh -huh. uh, it does an XCFG, uh, function. And when it does that exchange lock actually now becomes a uh, second, but it, it gets the old value as well. Oh, That's what the edge gives you. It gets the first value as well. Oh. This is exactly how it's implemented in the kernel, by the way. So it, 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 you know, we can call that uh, previous, like old value. OK. So it's uh, like so every guy who tries to log with yeah. get the last one in the queue. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. So lock basically points to the last one who tried to grab the lock. Grab the lock. OK. Perfect. Okay. So once it gets the previous, uh, the previous, you know, which is first, the second guy, right? He knows mm -hmm. now that previous is not null, right? Because if it if it was null, then XCG would have given uh, yeah. null, right? So he know okay, previous not null. What does it do? He sets pre next to to itself. OK. OK. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the state of the, so let's go to the next uh, Jamboard. OK. Let me know if you have any questions so far, but uh, uh, we're just building I, the scenario. So. Yeah, that's right. So what we have one quick thing is, why do we need uh, uh, pointer to a pointer? Because here we are not using a pointer to pointer, right? So like. In the algorithm down, we're just assigning log to the address of first, right? Do we need a pointer to pointer or just a pointer is enough? Uh, let's see. You're right. Uh, we probably don't need a pointer to pointer. Yes. OK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Probably down the lane, we might, yeah, we might see that. OK. But but I'm just trying to build the the algorithm. Sure. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Uh, uh, yeah. So I have one more doubt, but I'll ask probably a little later. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. So so far, so first guy got the lock. Second guy is trying to get the lock. Mm -hmm. So what is the uh, what is the state of the system look like right now? Right. That's what I'm. I want to draw. Got right? it. Because drawing is important for the for the intuition. So. Yeah. So it looks like this, okay? Okay. So it looks like this. First, second, and null. No. Okay. Okay. And block actually points to second. Okay. And this guy, this guy is con contending. Mm -hmm. Right now, okay, in, in time. This guy is in the critical section. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so far, the scenario I described is this. Yeah. It's, it's so clear. So, we're, 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 we're building a queue. You know, uh -huh. you see? So, then the third guy comes in and he does a exchange on the lock. He'll get second. 
second okay he'll be second pointer back and see he knows okay now i'm i'm actually contending i'm not i don't have access i don't have the lock because i didn't get null back when oh. i xcxg on the lock i got second back so it mm -hmm. takes second sets the next to itself mm -hmm. so seconds next becomes third and now the, and then you get yeah and then you get first second third and uh no no and so this these are all next pointers right these mm -hmm. arrows next next and then the lock now points to this guy and now this guy is also spinning spinning as in like we haven't described how they spin yet we'll, we'll go to that okay okay but they're they're, this, they're expected to be contending got it and then this is in the critical okay so it's beautiful, right? Like you basically, if you're contending, you take the last guy who is contending or the last guy who has the lock. It can be either. Uh -huh. And you modify their MCS structure to point to you. Point to you. <laughs> That's how you get into the queue. Yeah. So basically, you get to the line and you say, hey, uh, you're in front of me. OK, I'm behind you. OK, by the way, then when you get the lock, you pass it on to me. Pass it on to me. OK, yeah. So it's it's it's, it's yeah. not centralized, right? It's it's a very localized. Like yeah, you don't need a central mechanism to control, right? That's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you still have a central mechanism in the sense to get into the queue, you need to do exchange on the lock. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know who the last one is in the queue. Okay. Yeah, but from then on, it's it's like you and your person in the front of the queue. Yeah, from then on, exactly. Uh, yeah, from right. then on. Yeah. So that brings us to the next part, which is how do you uh, how do you contend, right? What is when you know you know you're contending now? You modify the next point of the guy in front of you. Uh -huh. Now, uh -huh. how do you spin? That's where that that locked field is in okay. your okay. Yeah, that's where the lock feel so you basically spin on the uh uh the locked field on your on your mcs's lock suit so the third guy will spin on his his mcs's lock field and then uh, and the second okay. and the second will also be spinning right they're both going to be spinning so you see the beauty of it the the third and the second guy, mm -hmm. oops, they are spinning on their on their own, uh, you know, on their own uh, locked fields. Okay, nice. Yeah, they're not so. Yeah, whereas with tickets, you have to constantly check the counter. The same right? counter. Yeah. yeah. The same counter, and so if the counter changes, uh, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Because some, um, you know, somebody did an unlock, right? Or, you know, there's there's a lot of contention and there's a lot of locks unlocks, right? Yeah. Then all the spinners, like if you have a lot of spinners, all of them will get invalidated and all of them will again get exclusive, uh, get shared access. Shared so, access. Yeah. So that that momentary like thing is there. Whereas with this, it's like you only spin on 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 the lock on on the your yeah on your your lock field. So. Every, everyone has their own, like, you know, when they're contending, they're spinning only on their locked, locked field, right? Mm -hmm. They're spinning. And same way, this guy's also, this guy's also spinning. Yeah. Okay. There's obviously this guy is not spinning because he's in a, first is in a, uh, in the critical yeah. section. Yeah. So they don't need to spin. Okay. So now it's quiz time. <laughs> Based on everything I told you, how does unlock work? So, so uh, it be, when the guy in the critical section wants to uh, uh, unlock himself, he'll go to the next field of his uh, uh, MCS lock and set the lock to one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So he basically goes to, like so. First, we'll go to uh you know next 
And obviously, this is missing details, race conditions, and stuff like that. Yeah, that that's a one that's of, one of my. Yeah, one you of my can have a race is. where. You can have a race where. Uh, the other guy did not send the next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that is handled in the kernel by a retry loop. Oh, okay. The other guy did not send a set a next. So you might not end up setting his lock. So he's decided he's contending because mm -hmm. he did the exchange, right? And he saw, oh, it's not null anymore. So it's yeah. about to set the next. Because that is not atomic, right? Yeah. So I think the next of the previous guy and reading that the lock is null is not mm -hmm. atomic. Yeah, that's true. Because there are two different memory locations. Exactly. Uh, so it's almost like transactional memory where you have to retry or something like that. So uh, exchange is done. Yeah. Exchange is what? The exchange is done once in the kernel sources, and we'll look at the kernel sources as well briefly. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if if we don't like probably like uh, if if we do it the other way around, we 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 need not. We need, there would not be any race condition. So the idea that I was thinking is, instead of every every uh, contender waiting on his log, if the contender waits on he, the the next in the queue's log bit, then there will not be any race, right? So for example, the second guy waits on first dot log. Uh. Okay. Um, that might work. Yes, that might work. Um, but the idea here is when the first guy unlocks, he passes the lock to the next guy. But you're right. Like another way of passing it might be. Yeah. So the nice. drawback of that is, uh, I guess, if that lock is shared with some data structure and first, then you're kind of infringing on their property a bit but yeah oh the whole cache line might be in validators yeah because it's it's asking for trouble a little bit plus oh, unlock okay. is like kind of a, i guess I, I guess it's a it's a bounded retry so even in the oh. race okay. it's not going to definitely happen so okay yeah when we look into the kernel sources maybe it'll, it'll become more clear to me yeah, sounds good. But yeah, yeah, that's a very actually good observation that first ne the next has to be set. Right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, but if for the intuition's sake, basically mm -hmm. the the for, you know the the lock holder just has to set lock to to one, right? So he one. is setting the lock for the the guy who. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, so just out of curiosity, like this MCS, uh, they it was first implemented in Linux kernel, or this was an academic paper and then in Linux took okay? it? I believe it's the it was an academic paper, I'm pretty sure. Okay, because uh, the I remember seeing that somebody mentioned the the, the research and then oh, and then made the changes so. Nice, nice. This is perfect. Yeah. So now, so with the kernel, right? Uh, kernel spin locks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a problem. Okay. The problem is that a spin lock has to fit into four bytes. Okay. Like a whole spin lock. And here you have pointers, or you have a next pointer uh -huh. and a lock uh, field and all this stuff. So, um, there uh, so what is done is uh, in the kernel you have if you think about it right with the spin law with with the kernel you have n number of cpus mm -hmm. there cannot be more than n spin locks if you had only one context only one each cpu can only spin on one lock at a time yes yeah so we have only so we only need uh, n number of M MCS structures that can be reused by anybody. Anybody, right? okay. 
That's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but actually, you have more than one context in the kernel. You have soft IRQ, IRQ, NMI. So you really you you can have four spin locks at any given time on a CPU at the same time because the NMI can preempt the spinner in oh. the IRQ, IRQ, and then he can spin. No. So the kernel has so uh, so anyway so actually so if you if you had four times like four times the number of CPUs uh -huh. uh, MCS log structures you could just allocate them okay and allocate them once statically and then you would never need uh, you know then then you just have to find out if you had a way of looking up uh the mcs structure for your context uh-huh right? and then and, and just reuse that okay and maybe we can make it fit in four in four bytes four. okay 30, 32 bit right yeah in a 64 bit machine the pointers are 64 <laughs> just single pointers 64 bit right uh -huh. um, so that's uh so there's some something is needed to to solve this so that's where the Q node comes in. So this is now we're getting into Q Q spin lock in the kernel, which uses the MCS lock okay. algorithm. Um, and uh, so it looks like this. Okay, so you have this. Each CPU has a Q node array. So let's let's just draw it. So. Q node. So this has. This is an array of four MCS structures, like I, I described. Mm -hmm. MCS spin lock. Okay, and I don't have to write everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is for one CPU. Then an, another CPU also has the same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. So this this structure keeps track of uh this, this structure is just like for the for cute spin locks to work okay but the beauty is like you can have more than one lock active at any given time so you could have uh you know you could have a a queue between this mcs spin lock and then this mcs spin lock for that that this guy's pointing to right and then you can have another independent queue here, like like that. Uh, and, and then uh, you know, then you can have another queue here, right? Of course, you cannot have a queue. Uh, you cannot have a queue where two Q, two MCS locks on the same CPU. Same are, CPU, yeah. Then it's a deadlock. Right? Deadlock, yeah. So you cannot have that. And here, I, I only if I draw one more CPU, right? I can I can probably draw another CPU. And here also you have Q node uh, having its own MCS sp uh, spin lock structure, and then one mm -hmm. MCS like that. So you can have. You can have this guy pointing to this guy like that. So now you have three, two here, and then one here. So you can, it's arbitrary. You can have, yeah. you can have a list like that. And they'll all be spinning on their lock bit. Um, I guess at any time, you can have more than one spinner on a CPU spinning on a different MCS such a lock bit in a, across different contexts, but it will be different locks as you mentioned. Exactly, yeah. Otherwise it's a deadlock. <laughs> yeah, so maybe in the kernel you might be on a spin lock and then a soft IRQ comes and then on top yeah, of that an IRQ comes and if an NMA comes you will have four spin locks active at the same CPU. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, some time ago in, in debug implementations of the kernel I noticed that even while just regular spinning there was a chance that the uh 
the kernel wouldn't disable preemption. So uh, you could have even in the same context, you could have a context switch, and so you could have multiple spinners. Then we'll uh, have a trouble here, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember why that was done. Uh, oh. here, here maybe, but I mean, in theory, if you had uh, multiple spinners on the same lock in the same context, yeah, on the same CPU, that's really not a problem. As long as uh, there's nothing in a lower context holding the lock, right? Um, then you have to back up. For example, say you're in the kernel, taking a spin lock, and then you got context switched and another guy came and trying to get a uh, same spin lock, it will be reusing the Q0 of zero, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I haven't looked, but I think that implementation will have to be disabled if they use Qt spin lock. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, if you use test, test and set or ticket. Uh, test and set will not have an issue. You're right, yeah. Yeah. But it's also kind of wasteful because spin locks are like you want to spin and then enter critical section unlock very fast yeah. if you're context switching then you're wasting time right exactly but that was required for some debugging purposes oh where you sure you, you cannot you shouldn't disable preemption or whatever i didn't really dig into like it too much okay but i, I was surprised to see that yeah so okay, by default say, every spin lock will disable preemption right when you do yeah. it okay got it so this one was like it disables preemption, mm -hmm. tries to grab the lock. If it's contended, then it uh, enables preemption, and then it retries. Oh. So in a way, it's, it's kind of like spinning, but it was it kept disabling and enabling preemption. Preemption, okay. Uh, which you cannot really do if you have this this yeah. sort of thing. You have enough MCS lock structures. Exactly. For, and even with the previous implementation, there might be fairness issues if you disable preemption, if you enable yeah. it back, right? Yeah, because we kind of run into the same compare exchange type of. Yeah, because the new guy who is coming might be trying to get the same log, and he, uh, by right. the time he comes, he'll get it. Yeah, 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 you're right. It's kind of uh, unfair on the same CPU. Yeah. A lot yeah. of cases to that's, look that's, for. A, that's, a good, that's a very good point. There was also some break lock implementation. I don't know if that's still there where uh, while you're spinning, somebody okay. can make you break out of the spin. Oh. Uh, if they if they wanted to. Uh, and I don't know what the error path for that looks like. Like if you break out of the spin, do you abort or okay. I don't know. But those are things that we can nuances that we can get into later. Maybe yeah. we can do another session on those nuances. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so it's clear, right? Yeah, uh, perfectly clear. Yeah. Okay. And this is like it's been several years. This is used, uh, like this has been used uh, a lot, and also the mutex and the mutex uh, spin-on owner uh, thing, where the mutex instead of instead of sleeping. What the kernel mutex does is uh, it spins on, uh, you know, it spins on the owner, uh -huh. and and sleeps. So it basically spins on owner if the owner is is running on a CPU, because okay. mutex, the owner can grab the lock and he can go to go to sleep as well inside the critical section because some mutex. Uh, there's this logic where okay, if somebody's in a critical section and they're running on CPU, which you know, right? You you told me about this too. Yeah. Then uh, we can just spin on them briefly. So you can have multiple spinners who are contending on a on a mutex. Mutex. Okay. And that fair, they use this. They use this code called OSQ, Optimistic Spin Queue, which is basically basically MCS. Oh, okay. So they also so, reuse the same uh, Q node. I'm not sure if the code reuses the same logic, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did because the the actual MCS algorithm is a, it's in its own file, and Q spin lock, which has this logic, is in a different uh, file, and it reuses oh. that oh. under the hood. Okay. Okay. So. 
Yeah, so that's uh, that's it for for the drawings. Mm -hmm. I can share uh, the code and we can discuss that briefly. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me pull up a code window. Yeah, I can just use Elixir. Use uh, MTS pen lock dot C. It's actually a dot H. Only 120 lines. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, this is a struct MCS spin lock. Okay. Okay. You have a locked mm -hmm. um, a bit. Okay. And you have the next pointer, as I showed. And then they have this count thing, which because you can have, I guess, because you can have context preempting, you know, the higher context preempting the lower. Oh. I'm not percent sure okay. uh, why this, why this count is needed. So that's something we need to look into. But these are the two main ones. Okay. And uh, this is the lock algorithm. So if we just have some basic initialization, then when you try to grab the lock, you get the prev using HCHG. Okay. If previous now, you got the lock, so you return. Cool. If previous not now, then you set the previous next to us, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly what we discussed. Yeah. And then you just wait on your locked bit to be set, which the current critical section will, you know, when they do their unlock, they will, they will set it. So yeah. Once it's set, you get out of here and you got the lock. Okay. Um, unlock has the race you mentioned. So <laughs> over that. So here, if it's null, means we have two cases. One is there is no contender. Mm -hmm. And the second case is there a contender has come, but he did not yet do the setting of the next. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I think that's more that's the, the case, not the thing I described, because you cannot have another lock uh person come in and grab the lock. That's not possible because the next guy will get it, right? Get it. Yeah, that's right. But while then but but the but then the who's gonna be next depends on like uh I guess the next point of being set, right? But yeah, exactly. So, okay, so, so here you do a content release. Okay. Yeah, so comparison, what do we, we check if um, let's see, so node is our MCS node. Mm -hmm. We check if we, lock uh, is yeah, lock is equal to node, which means that uh, it's possible that, yeah, it's possible, lock basically points to the tail. Tail, yeah. So, so it's possible it's, that uh, we are no longer the tail because there's another. Uh, yeah. So there's a contender. So if lock yeah. was equal to node, that means there was no contender. Yeah. That that means there was no contender. We're we're done. Yeah. So we can immediately return. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if yeah. So th this so that's the case where there was only one. Yeah. Person holding the lock. We are the only one who are taking the log. There was no contender. So we reset log to null and then we return. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, I guess, the common case, right? Yeah. But otherwise, we have to, otherwise, yeah. So that makes sense. So basically, here, that, that this is how we're ensuring the sort of atomicity. Because uh -huh. the, the first uh, contender who comes in, they try to set. Uh, they try to get in the queue, right? Mm -hmm. But before they get into the queue by setting next, they do an exchange on lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but... yeah. So if we do a compare exchange there on lock as well, we know that ha we know that if there's somebody who's about to set the next pointer or not. But yeah. That's true. Exactly. If they haven't set it yet, if they haven't yeah. set it yet, so, so that's you know somebody enough. took the tail, but they did not yet set next. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so or, they, or, or, they, or they haven't even taken the tail yet, which is also okay. Uh, if they yeah, haven't taken Then we'll immediately return, right? Yeah, we'll immediately return and that guy will get the lock. He it doesn't does. need to uh, spin it. He doesn't spin need to spin. He's, no, he's not contending anymore. Contending, he gets yeah. he gets the lock and he's he, he's done. Yeah. He's done, exactly. So he's also not spinning, yeah. yeah he's also not spinning, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Whereas, uh, if we do this, uh, if we do the compare exchange and we see that it is not null, then we know that even if the next was null, that guy is going to spin. Spin, yeah. That's why we are waiting for the next to That's become why we have normal. To, uh, yeah, at this, po at this point, we are 100% sure that there's a small race yeah. where X is about to be set, but it's not being set, but we are 100% sure it will be set. Be because set. if it's not set, then we're going to hang here, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. That. So we are we are hundred percent sure. Yes. A contender has come, but he did not yet set next, right? Yeah. Exactly. Very exactly. good. Yeah. And and uh, you're you're uh, great. Actually, you found out just like when I was explaining that next has not been set yet. So that's that's really amazing. Um, yes. Yeah, and it's, it's a, such a simple and elegant algorithm, right? Man, <laughs> <laughs> solutions to complex problem can be so simple like this, right? <laughs> yeah, like it's it's a queue. You need a queue, so the uh, queue is a linked list. Right? It's basically a linked list of of uh, of spinners. Exactly. Nice. So, yeah, I'm curious if we click on this. Let's see who all are using it. Uh, Elixir doesn't show. Can you go to 6.3? Yeah, because six, the latest one usually doesn't get indexed correctly. So maybe they are not. Yeah, same thing. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, it's a problem with the index. No, like or click something. on, uh, like, yeah. Now click on that once again and see. What? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's using it? <laughs> maybe there's, uh, yeah, maybe it's, uh, there's some assembler or something linking macro into it. Or, or oh, macro, okay. yeah, I don't know. But uh, if we go to QSpin lock, uh, we can quickly look at that code as well. So first let us, uh, so uh, first let us see some structures, right? So this is, this, this, they have this Q node, which is basically a wrapper around struct MCS pin lock, and it has some more bits for Paraword stuff. Uh, okay. And uh, then you have this per CPU array Q nodes. Mm -hmm. Here. So max nodes is how many contacts. And so each CPU has an array of Q nodes. OK. Uh, of, of size, uh, this is, I believe, is size four. Yeah. Four? Max okay. nodes. Yeah, four. Or okay, for four contexts. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, here you can see how they're encoding and uh, encoding and decoding the tail. So basically, from a during the encoding, they take this thirty-two bit number, or mm -hmm. is it decoding? Sorry, encoding. Basically, they have to take the CPU and the index. The CPU, I guess, gives the Okay, so let me back up a little. So encoding is basically they are taking the, they have the, uh, they know that, okay, we are on this CPU and this context. Uh -huh. We have to generate a 32-bit number that uh, that can help us look up in the future. It can help us look up which Q node uh, we need, right? Uh, oh, Okay. Uh, so that that's uh, that's the encoding thing, and then the decoding is the reverse. So okay. you can see for the decoding, it will return struct M struct uh, MCS uh, spin lock structure. The CPU is obtained from the thirty-two bit, and oh. then the index is obtained. The CPU is used for looking up the correct per CPU array, okay. and then the index is directly used to look up the context. Oh, okay. So every so, spin lock uh, that you declare on your structure will get a encoded value. And whenever you want to lock or unlock, you use the decode to basically do that, right? Is that yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, the, so if you look at the struct, uh, struct Q spin lock, right? Um, uh -huh. Yeah. 
SQL spin lock. Uh, yeah. So this is the this is the lock, and uh, it's basically a union of all this stuff. But basically, it is that it is holding thirty-two bit. You can see each of these trucks, which are part of the union, they're thirty-two bit, right? They're not greater than thirty-two bit. Okay. Okay. Um, so you so, have uh, the, this pin lock basically gets that encoded value. It's storing the encoded value, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, so basically, this doesn't need uh, you know to store NCS lock yes, pointers yes, or yes. any any of that stuff. Nice. Well, hopefully, the explanation was yeah, it, yeah not it, too. It, it, uh, it, yeah, it, it, it was very straightforward. Yeah, you explained it really nicely. Like without reading the code, I completely understood <laughs> everything. Yeah. Nice. It was really nice. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, anything else? Uh, One quick question: Like, why do we need? Uh, why do? Why are we restricting a spin lock to be four bytes? I. That's a good question. I. I have no idea. Uh, to be honest. Uh, okay. It is some uh, like it must be some legacy thing, but uh, oh. there are some comments in this file mm -hmm. that that describe the the encoding. Like if I scroll, how so it's given here. Based on how to make it fit the four bytes, we assume spin lock t to be. It's just it's just a requirement, I guess. The spin uh, lock t has to be oh, four bytes because of the existing API. Okay, maybe yeah. the, the parameters to the spin lock is if yeah. Okay, makes sense. Possibly, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, um, so I would just tell whoever's listening to this to double check and not because uh, we're both learning and you know I could have said some things in inaccurately, but the idea here is to build the intuition and just use this as a starting point, um, or at least like most people, I guess they they wouldn't get into like the internals like this, right? But because they they're just using it, right? But they might have a question like. What happens during contention, and is there like cache line uh, issues or stuff like that? Right. Uh, I guess that that can be so that that can be a reason why somebody wants to yeah wants exactly. to have this knowledge. Yeah. And once you have this intuition, it's very easy to go inside the code and and clear the doubts that may arise later, right? So this this is like the starting point. As a start, starting point, it's it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so I'll uh, with that I'll stop the recording and uh, yeah, next week maybe we can go over some other topic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll think about what what to talk about. I was thinking maybe restartable sequences would be a nice topic. Sure. Yeah, that's also a very interesting topic actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Thanks, Vinny. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So one thing I wanted to uh, touch on that I didn't touch in the last uh, last time was uh, like wh why this uh, Q spin lock, like having it spin on its own cache line, right? That is important. I actually was talking to Stephen Rosted, and he kind of he gave me uh, uh, he he mentioned a point which I think we also discussed. But I, I don't think we emphasized it enough. Oh, and that oh. is that, uh, like, oftentimes, like, when you have a, some kind of, like, data structure of your own, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you have, uh, like, some elements in it, right? And you have, like, a, a spin lock structure in this, right? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, spin lock or whatever, lock. So here, uh, one one thing is if, if this was ticket if this was implemented using ticket locks right you would be spinning constantly on on the on the uh counter so this this would have 
the current and the uh, the ticket counters, right? So you would be spinning on this. Problem is, like your contenders are also spinning on. Uh, sorry, uh, all the contenders are spinning are spinning on yeah. this. Yeah. And then the guy who's in the critical section, he can go and modify these guys. So if oh. these guys are in the same cash line, right? Yeah. Then uh, yeah. it it causes problems because it causes problems not only for the spinners but also for the critical section itself because this whole line is bouncing now. So yeah. what happens is, say uh, step step one, uh, say say the, the critical section is entered uh, and and uh, you know. Uh, these two variables are accessed, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're sitting in the critical, the, the guy who is in the critical section, these variables are sitting in, in the cache line of that CPU. Um, and there are some, mod say there are some modifications. So now the that cache line, which contains the lock is in the modified state. Okay. okay. And now contender comes, he comes in and he, he messes around with this stuff. Now what this, now this stuff has to be, uh, first of all, there has to be a write back. Into uh -huh. the into the memory subsystem, oh. and then this whole cache line is then put into like a, a read state, right? Yeah. On the in the in the guy whose whose critical section it is, and and then the spinner will also get a copy of it and will read it. Okay. So he's constantly doing that, and so uh, the as the guy as the guy in the critical section keeps modifying these guys, you will have cache line bouncing between between the spinner and the uh, and the, and the, the, and the owner and the spinner, yeah. The owner and the spinner, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a big drawback. Like, so one way is to put this whole lock out of line, to put it out, like put it out of line. I think I have seen some code where they actually make this uh, a line. Uh, okay. And I think that that could be one reason why, you know, they do that is that they don't want people to mess around with the lock. Um, put, it, put it on its own cache line so that yeah, rest of the yeah. rest of the things in the so if, I, if there's a spinner, right? They don't need yeah, but but with Q spin locks, now the the thing completely changes because uh, on, you only need access to the cache line if you're a contender, right? You need access to the cache line once, then you just look up your Q spin lock structure and you you spin on that. Yeah. You no longer, as you're spinning, uh, if if this was a Q spin log, as you're spinning, you no longer need to read this at all. Exactly, that's true. Right, that's true. you you will be signaled by the previous guy. Previous, yeah. So you can spin as much as you want, and uh, even even if th this whole thing is in one cache line, right? You mm -hmm. won't keep reading that cache line, so you won't have cache line bouncing between the the critical section. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the spinner. Yeah, that's that's true. See, with the queued spin lock, you are not actually spinning on this memory area. You are spinning on the per CPU memory area, right? Correct. Yeah, on yeah. the MCS spin lock structure okay. that belongs to your CPU, which is which is in a completely different cache line, right? Cache line. Even for the guy who is in the critical section, his MCS spin lock structure is in the per CPU area. Yeah. Uh, so. That, that and that makes and it also makes sense why they need this to fit into four bytes because this adds space to the uh, to the uh, to the data structure right it adds it makes it bigger yeah so imagine if it was like if it was a true MCS lock it would have like two pointers or whatever <laughs> it would make the structure much bigger okay. and the API of the spin lock also needs to change right because. Because now structure changed, right? So probably they yeah. don't the reason. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like API. So they kept it the same and it worked all worked out. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> so hopefully that uh, little nugget of information was uh, somewhat yeah. useful. But I think it's important to keep in context, like for for kernel programmers and system programmers, mm -hmm. like when there's contention, uh, maybe it's good to have an idea whether. There's cash line bouncing or not, and exactly, and so forth. So, yeah. 